Throughout its 8,500 miles of marine coastline and more than 2,500 artificial reefs, Florida boasts an abundance and diversity of fish species. Every fish that swims in our waters ranks as a vital and valuable resource. With more anglers and better equipment available, catch and release fishing has become essential to ensuring there will always be adequate stocks of fish to catch. Each of us must take a hands-on approach every day we are on the water to help conserve our fisheries by practicing oh, catch and release fishing right. whenever possible. Yeah. I'm Mark Sosin. Managing Florida's fisheries is a complex task based on scientific research. These scientists tell us that if you only remember two things, most of the fish you release will survive. The first is to land the fish quickly rather than battle it to exhaustion. The second centers on handling the fish as little as possible and keeping the fish in the water during the release process without lifting it or touching it. Before you even put a bait out or make a cast, choose the hooks you will use carefully and modify any lure that has treble hooks. Flattening the barb on a hook increases hookups because it makes penetration easier and allows you to release a fish with a minimum of damage to it. Studies show that inline circle hooks lodge in the mouth some 90% of the time and are recommended choice over the traditional J hook or offset circle hooks when using natural baits. If you use lures with three sets of treble hooks, remove the middle set. You don't need it. Cutting off one of the three hooks on each of the remaining sets of trebles makes it easier to recover the plug from the fish and your hookup rate will be just as good. When a fish is ready to be released, keep it in the water without touching it and use a release tool to remove the hook. The fish should swim off. If a fish is hooked deeply, don't try to pull it out or jerk on the leader to break it. Instead, cut the leader as close to the fish's mouth as possible. Choosing non-stainless steel hooks will allow the hook to rust out of the fish if you have to cut the line. Even some lures are made with stainless steel hooks, so be sure to check before purchasing new ones. With larger fish, keep the boat moving forward slowly. Usually, they will swim with the boat, making it easier to release the fish. Don't lift the larger fish across the gunnel. With a sailfish or marlin, the recommended procedure is to keep the fish in the water, swim it alongside the moving boat, and using a pair of gloves to grab the bill with your thumbs pointing at each other. Once the hook is removed, the moving boat will force water over the fish's gills, and it should regain its strength before you let it go. If you find it necessary to lift the fish out of the water, hold it horizontally with one hand under the belly to support the organs and keep it out of the water the minimum amount of time. Lifting a fish out of the water with a release gaff, a jaw locking grip, or even your thumb in the jaw and not supporting the belly will damage internal organs as well as the delicate region under the lower jaw. A hole in the lower jaw of a fish created by a gaff destroys the vacuum that many species create to ingest their prey. Unless you plan to keep a fish, a gaff should never be used. If you need to use a net to control and lift the fish, it should be knotless and rubber coated to help prevent the removal of mucus from the skin of the fish. Above all, don't put a hand inside the gills or hold the fish by depressing its eyes. If you remove any of the tunas, bonitas, mackerels, and any fish taken out of deep water, the fish should be pushed back into the water head first and forcefully to provide a rush of water over the gills. With other species, place them back in the water gently and hold them alongside the boat. If there are strong tidal currents or if you're in a river where there is a flow of water, simply hold the fish so that it faces into the current and water moves across its gills. It should revive quickly. You can also start the boat engine and move forward slowly to create the same effect. When there isn't enough water flow or you're waiting or you can't move the boat, Work the fish in a figure eight pattern 
or in a lazy S, so water is forced across its gills. The key is to keep moving the fish forward rather than That's forward right. and then backward. Moving it. a fish backward in the water does not allow Two water to flow over the head. gills. You'll feel when a fish regains its strength and is ready to swim off. Simply open your hands and watch it swim away. If a released fish floats back to the surface, it's worth the effort to recover it and try to resuscitate it again. A fish brought to the surface from deep water often experiences an expanded air bladder that can push the stomach out of its mouth. This condition is known as barotrauma. Signs to look for include the stomach protruding out of the fish's mouth, intestines out of the anus, bulging eyes, and an overall bloated appearance. When a fish is displaying one or all of these symptoms, it's essential to remove this pressure so that the fish can return to its deep water habitat. Several venting tools are on the market designed to puncture the air bladder and deflate the expanded bladder. The tool should be inserted at a 45 degree angle on the fish's side, about an inch behind the pectoral fin. The hissing noise you hear is the air escaping. Do not puncture or attempt to push the stomach back into the fish's mouth. Right. It will right itself after the fish descends into the water. Killing or mutilating a shark or barracuda simply because they have teeth proves detrimental, serves no practical purpose, and has a negative effect on the fishery. They are apex predators in the food chain and should be released unharmed. Sharks have a cartilaginous skeleton instead of the bony one found in most fish. That gives them the ability to almost bite their own tail. They are exceptionally powerful, difficult to hold, and can move very quickly, and they should be handled carefully. If the hook is in the jaw or clearly visible, you may be able to remove it with a dehooking tool. Otherwise, Cut the leader as close to the mouth as possible and let the shark swim off. Leave the animal in the water and don't put your hands anywhere near the jaws of a shark. Be equally careful with small sharks. Anglers sometimes try to hold them and end up getting bitten. Barracuda should be treated as any other fish. Leave them in the water, use a release tool, and avoid handling them if possible. Wahoo can also pose a danger if not handled carefully. They have incredibly sharp teeth capable of causing a serious wound if those teeth merely brush against you. They too should be left in the water if you plan to release them. If you're going to gaff a wahoo, insert the gaff near the head of the fish. When you gaff a wahoo in the midsection, its flexible body allows it to swing back and forth with its mouth open. Occasionally, most of us catch a fish we consider a trophy, a record, or simply a species we would like to hang on our wall. You can release the fish and still order the mount, even months after the catch. No matter what anyone says, taxidermists today don't need the fish or any part of it, including bills, fins, or teeth, to produce a beautiful replica mount. All you have to do is tell them the species, the size of the fish, and any distinguishing marks. A photo will also help to create a lifelike replica. They'll do the rest. No matter how much science does to ensure that Florida's fisheries remain healthy and viable for the recreational angler, and no matter how much money we spend on these projects through license fees, excise taxes, and sport fish restoration, the responsibility for protecting our fisheries belongs to the individual angler. The key lies in developing a catch and release attitude, fostering voluntary release of fish that could become table fare. Always try to limit your catch rather than catching your limit. And remember that every fish is valuable. There are no trash fish. Catch and release fishing is the way of the future. It's an essential tool for maintaining our fish stocks and fisheries. With more anglers and more sophisticated tackle and equipment, catch and release fishing makes a significant difference. If each of us thinks about the future of Florida's fisheries every day we are on the water and every time we catch a fish, the years ahead will be bright and 
everyone will be able to continue to enjoy the superb fishing that has made Florida the fishing capital of the world.